You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, the controversy surrounding bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. With us, we have an expert on the topic. We have Dr. Edmer. Dr. Edmer, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you very much now, for having me. You know, I say expert, and I didn't use it loosely in this particular uh, you, you know, time. The, uh, you're a board certified in, in anti-aging medicine. Absolutely. Board certified internist, right. right? You're the chief medical officer of Alvarado Hospital. That's correct. PhD in microbiology. I yeah. guess you spent most of your life in school. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to retire, actually. Right. <laughs> so uh, now, the controversy surrounding bioidentical hormones. Uh, let's start there. I mean, I can actually talk from a personal experience. Okay. Uh, I, you know, uh, being board certified in uh, anti-aging, I actually believe in a hormone replacement therapy. Okay. And uh, I've put my wife on the therapy. Uh, about five years ago, uh, and uh, she was feeling well, she was doing great, and then she went to her gynecologist who took her off the medication. Okay. Uh, and then she, I said, well, you need to get a second opinion, uh, and uh, the second uh, gynecologist says, no, you're too old. Uh, at this point, she's you know, uh, over 60. Okay. Uh, I don't know if she lets me, likes me to mention that on the air, uh, but the, uh, because of her age and uh, supposed the risk factors uh, that they took her off the medication. Uh, so then uh, she started getting the problems with osteoporosis uh, and problems with her, uh, her, her heart health. Uh, and uh, the doctors then sent her to uh, an endocrinologist uh, to try to give her medications to correct some of these problems. And the endocrinologist says, you know, you've got to go speak to your husband because you need to go back on your, uh, your bioidentical hormones. Okay. Uh, so, so the, the endocrinologist supported your... Supported my intervention. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the, the bottom line here is that it is controversial, and if you speak to four different uh, physicians, you'll get four different answers. Uh, and it's very important for women that's choosing to go on uh, hormone replacement therapy to get all the facts, because there's a lot of good uh, and a lot of advantages to be on this uh, type of therapy. So what's good about it, what's bad about it? And who should do it? Okay, that's an excellent question. Uh, the, uh, what's good about it is uh, as women uh, age, they'll, uh, they'll go through menopause. And with menopause, uh, they have a lot of the uh, symptoms of uh, the hot flashes and memory loss and hair loss uh, that uh, prompts them to want to go on hormone re replacement therapy. And it uh, actually is very safe to use uh, for short periods of time, maybe the five, the best times to use it, I, I should say, are just as you go through menopause. Okay. And all physicians pretty much believe that for like maybe five years, sh short periods of time, uh, for treating the vasomotor symptoms, uh, it's a good thing to do. However, long term, what they found in older women, that there's an increased risk of stroke. For bioidentical uh, hormones? For, uh, well, this is, uh, the, the studies, that's where the problem is. The studies were done uh, on uh, synthetic hormones, which were taken orally. Okay. Uh, and uh, in the study, the 2002 uh, uh, per, uh, study, uh, when they looked at 16,000 nurses, there was about a 40% increase incidence of uh, strokes and a 30% increase in, in breast cancer. But they were taking, uh, they weren't taking bioidentical hormones. Okay. Uh, and they, also, this was an older population. Uh, but based on those results, uh, all physicians started taking their patients off of the, bio, uh, off of the uh, hormone therapy. Okay. Uh, but now, if you advance forward to 2013, 2014, uh, we're finding that maybe bioidentical hormones may be a safer alternative. Okay, safer than those synthetic hormones. Right, exactly. Okay, and uh, so, so what is your message to women that I, I guess they are in the menopause or perimenopause what is your message about why they would even consider it? The message is that uh, the bioidentical hormones have about 400, 400 different functions in women. So it's not just a, a, about uh, the hot flashes one's getting. It's about their uh, brain health, their bone health, and their heart health. And my wife had to go back on bioidentical hormone therapy uh, because her lipid profile was getting uh, high. And it okay. turns out that one of the 400 things that uh, estrogen therapy does in women is it lowers the triglycerides, uh, it lowers the bad cholesterol, it raises the good cholesterol. Uh, and the, all those numbers were getting out of whack when she stopped her medical therapy. The other thing is she was getting osteoporotic uh, or thinning of the bones. And the estrogen uh, helps with uh, bone health. She was also having problems with her memory and all that improved as we slowly uh, introduced the uh, bioidentical hormones back to, into her therapy. Okay, now do you do it yourself? Uh, well, because men I, and women both do this, right? Absolutely. You know, if you're going to uh, you know talk to talk, you know, you got to walk the walk. And uh, 
I'm uh, actually going to be uh, 65. I go on Medicare in two months. Okay. How am I? How am I looking? You said you, you look good. Uh, and I saw you walk in here. You walk like a young guy. Yeah, I'm going to be skiing next month at 14,000 feet with my uh, my younger son. And one of the ways I do that uh, is uh, I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. Oh boy. Uh, because I'm in the, the equivalent of, uh, for uh, for menopause would be andropause for men. Uh, and Isn't it dangerous testosterone? Uh, I mean, there's, I, I'm saying, I'm not saying it's dangerous. I'm saying, couldn't an expert say that testosterone replacement is dangerous? You know, any, any medication. That it can cause prostate yeah. cancer. Uh, well, any medication potentially could be a dangerous if it's not used appropriately. Uh, but there's actually a study that they did here at UCSD uh, looking at the men uh, between age 55 and 85. They actually studied them for 30 years. And they were looking at the, their testosterone levels. And they found that men that were in the lowest 25% for testosterone levels over 25 years had a higher mortality rate, like 40% higher with a low testosterone. So what I would say, you're at more risk for dying with a low testosterone level than a high testosterone. Okay. That said, you know, if you're on testosterone replacement therapy, you know, you should be monitoring uh, your prostate for nodules. You should be getting your, uh, your PSAs, you know, two or three times a year. So uh, it's very safe to use. If you have prostate cancer, I wouldn't use this medication. But if you're healthy, low PSAs, great drug. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things that will put a zing back in your step. What's the number one misconception about bioidentical hormones that you hear that's out there in the press that maybe uh, frustrates you or drives you crazy? Uh, well, that it's dangerous okay. uh, and that it causes cancer. I mean, we, we hear that. I mean, yeah. uh, and uh, the, the problem is the, the earlier studies were done using uh, semi-synthetic uh, hormones because the, the drug companies wanted to sell them, number one. Number two, uh, they were using uh, one dose for all women. Uh, they were doing a Premarin therapy and say, here's your Premarin, go out and have a nice day. What the uh, modern anti-aging doctor does now is he, he tailors the dose of the medication to the patient. So uh, we get baseline levels of what your hormone levels are. Okay. They start you on a therapy, and the trick is to go slow, go low with a very low dose, and you want to gradually bring the, uh, the patient up to a therapeutic uh, level, uh, and it takes you know, monitoring. Uh, is it a little bit more expensive? Absolutely. Uh, but you end up with a, uh, an endpoint where you're getting the right amount of the medication for you, and you're being, uh, you're being closely monitored for all the potential bad side effects. Now, as an internist, I guess you're an internist. Internists work with an older population. Exactly. Is that right? Yes. Okay. How would they benefit, and how do they benefit, knowing what you know? Well, you know, the bioidentical hormones is really only a piece of the puzzle. Okay. Uh, as far as you know, healthy age, I don't like really, I don't really like this idea of anti-aging. I okay. like more of the idea of healthy aging, and it's really part of a program uh, to uh, live a healthy lifestyle, uh, free of chronic diseases. You know, where you can enjoy your grandchildren, be active. You know, right into uh, what used to be called old age, which we now call, you know, I call middle age. So you are, uh, you have a traditional medicine practice? Is Absolutely. that correct? That's correct. Okay. Are, are you using this in your, uh, are you using bioidentical hormones with your current pa patient population? And not only do I use it, um, but you know, I feel like I'm an expert on it. Uh, why? Because uh, you know, I, I'm board certified now by about five years. Uh, and uh, I found uh, f for my patients, what works best is starting with even lower doses than is recommended by the standard you know, books that you read on it, you know, how to implement this form of therapy. So I've been able to uh, start low, uh, avoid a lot of the side effects of over-prescribing the medications, uh, and I'm very comfortable with this form of therapy because I realize uh, there's several different ways to monitor patients. There's blood tests, there's urine tests, there's spit tests, and I've been able to develop uh, what I feel comfortable with, get, which gives me the best data, least amount of money, and get the patients into their appropriate ranges for their hormone Who is an ideal candidate? At what age, I mean, a woman watching this, what age should they do something or seek a doctor like you yeah. or you? I mean, the ideal time is, I mean, it was when women first start going through uh, menopause. So we're talking anywhere from age 35 through 55. And okay. it, it is a range. The best time to start this therapy, and I think all physicians would agree, is just as you go through uh, the menopause. And why is that? When they went back and drilled down and looked at the original studies, even with uh, you know, the Premarin products, uh, they found the, the problem with that study, it was an older population. And if they looked at the younger patient populations, they did not see the bump in breast cancer and heart disease. So the best 
patients for this is, you know, just as you're going through menopause, having those hot flashes, you should go see your physician. You should go see a board certified specialist uh, from A4M uh, to uh, A4M. To the, what's A4M? Uh, the American Academy of Anti-Aging. Medicine. Medicine. See, okay, so see one of those. And, and you're right here in San Diego. I am. Uh, do they have to see, go to the hospital? I mean, do you have a private practice? Because if you're chief medical officer of Alvarado Hospital, where do they see you? I have a private practice, and uh, you can go to my website at drlarryemder.com. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's my bio in there, a lot of great information on uh, bioidentical hormones and great resources, which is a good place to start. Uh, and then if you're interested, uh, you know, call Claudia, make an appointment. Uh, we spend an hour with the patients. We go over all the, you know, the, the controversies, uh, and we inform our patients uh, okay. the, whether this is a, the right form of therapy for them. If it's natural hormones or bioidentical hormones, somebody could also argue that it's not natural anyway. I mean, women weren't made to take these hormones. What's wrong with just aging gracefully? Well, I, 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 I want to hear your thoughts on that. Because I'm a baby boomer. We don't want to age gracefully. We want to be on there to ski slopes. We want to be skiing with our kids. We want to be enjoying our grandchildren. We want to be active. Uh, the idea of, of our grandparents where you retired age 65 and you stood on your rocking chair, rocking chair ready to die is over with. Because you know, the baby boomers were out there. We okay. want to have fun. These are bioidentical hormones with the right lifestyle will permit you to do that free of you know, chronic diseases, cancer, feeling Good. great, feeling the best you can possibly feel. Do people travel to see you? They do. Are all your wife's friends on this? And your circle of friends? Uh, they, they, they haven't come in. They haven't come in. Doesn't she convince them because she feels so good? Well, her Maj group, uh, you know, there's uh, six women and they got seven opinions. Okay. So you, you figure it out. All right. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Hey, it was my pleasure. Very interesting. Yeah. Excellent. Good for you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again or find out more about Dr. Emder, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com and put in Dr. Emder, which Dr. is listed. DrLarryEmder.com. Yes. And, and, uh, and we'll have your website at the bottom of, uh, of the show. Thank you so Thanks much. Again.